Hi there everyone, um, okay, um, I just started doing my first screen cam video. Um, what I'm hoping to do today, um, firstly, is to just like try and explain to people um, that unlike most photographers, um, I'm one of these that like to manipulate the photograph afterwards um, so it's, it's kind of it'll probably be easier to explain but I'm more of a post-production uh, photographer um, although I'm good with a camera and um, I'm good, I have a good eye for getting the right kind of photographs um, the, the reason I call myself an artistic photographer is that I like to do stuff to the photograph once it's been taken so instead of just having ordinary kind of photog photographs for me I like to add special effects um, adjustments all different kinds of um, effect so this is probably be quite a longish video but it will be exploring all the different digital aspects of the digital darkroom um, because I think that digital photography the the argument that most of us have is that a lot of people criticize the manipulation of a photograph that some of these real real hard, uh, kind of old school photographers that learn to use film and stuff often um, argue that the photograph should be good from the very beginning and when you do raw photography usually the file itself is quite bland so you even though you going out there and trying to capture the photograph in the best kind of expo to get the best exposure the best color uh, level <clears throat> it's you're gonna end up with quite a flat image <clears throat> until you take it into the software so it's kind of it's like an applicate everything's based on the applications uh, I've been using um, digital software now for about 21 years since about 1995 I started with Coral Photo uh, I think it was called Pho I forget the actual programs name now but it was um, it was definitely one of the Coral products um, it used to do uh, graphic design software and things like that which I've always um, explored from about 1995 in um, college when it was all cutting and pasting and things so anyway um, I'm going to be exploring Photoshop today I'm going to be exploring Google Nick um, and hopefully you will get an insight into the, my post-production process which is for me is the most important part um, obviously this I'd say 60% is the actual going out and taking photographs, having a good eye, looking for a good, you know, a good image. Then once you, once you get that photograph room, then it's all about exploring the different colours. So I'm just going to change that background actually, um, because for this presentation, um, I'd rather have something just a little bit more abstract and colourful. So while I'm waiting for that, so um, hopefully my future clients, uh, people that want my work will understand, you know, that photography is not all about going out there and capturing great images. It's about making great images in an artistic way. Um, so just while I'm doing this presentation, I'm just going to change the, I'm using an iMac 21 inch, I think it's 2013. Uh, edition. Um, I brought. I managed to buy it for about um, 750 pounds, and it's worth over a thousand. So I did really well there. So let's have just have a look at some abstract. Hmm. Where are you? Here we are. Something a little bit abstract for this presentation. Oh, that's a bit heavy. That's a bit too. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'm going to use one of my most recent photographs 
Um, of the of a fear that I've done. So because I think that'll probably look quite cool. So documents. Um here we are. So yeah, if I just choose one of I'll just choose that one. Okay there, that's nice and colourful. Okay, so this is a photograph I took a few days ago now. Of a, a bloom festival, which I think is quite magical. Um the original photograph wasn't like this. So I might look into that at some point. It was it needed some sort of trickery. I like to think of it as magic, you know. I think you, if you don't, for me, all of art, because I'm an artist as well, everything has to revolve around fantasy and magic and just this, this idea of being like a wizard. I'll just quit some of the programs here. Um, so yeah, Lightroom, this is my... This, this, this is the program that I tend to use quite a lot of, Lightroom. I w was thinking of um, moving over to other programs, uh, but in the end, I just thought I'd stick with it. It's good. It's a good process. It's good for organising all of your um, your photographs and stuff. All of every, everything really good on here. In fact, I should clean it up more. Um, and I should organize things more. I usually just have a massive giant stretch. So I'm going to pick a photograph that um, and explain how things can be enhanced with various programs. Now, for anyone that doesn't know, there's a new program. Well, not new. It's been around for a long time now, but uh, Google have just made it free. Um, I'm trying to find the right photograph to explain how I make things better. Um, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll do that fair one that I've just done. So, I mean the, the actual blue one. So, this was the original. So if I click on that. There you are. It's quite a misty, boring, quite a, quite a very. There's nothing really there, but there's a lot of information in this photograph. This when I first saw it, I thought it well, would have because I put it the camera into a special mode, aperture mode, and it decided to take a long, longish image. But I was looking at the photograph, and it looks it was clear. It's a nice clear image. So a lot of people say, oh, that's a real messed up photograph. You've overexposed it. You've done such and such. And this is where this is where I do my magic. Because I know that there's, I can look at this photograph and I know it's interesting. It's got some nice composition. It's exciting. There's a lot of energy in it. It says a lot. And I like, just like it. It's got an interesting factor to it. Now, this is where a lot of photographers will go, mm-mm. You've done a bad image. Walk away. You need to. You should have done that differently. And they work. They, they are. Other one. I think I didn't just do that one. This one was too dark. And looking at it, it's quite blurry. So, but so this one, it, it works for me. And then I've made it look like that. You see, I knew that it could be altered to look fantastic. So, a lot of photo digital photography can cheat. You know, and that's where I think it winds people up because it can cheat. Excuse me, just going to have a drink. I think a lot of photographers nowadays feel frustrated and kind of infuriated, even that people can. You see, with me, uh, being an artist as well, is about experimentation, it's about making mistakes and looking for abnormalities and exploiting them. You know, looking for mistakes, looking for, uh, some photography can, you know, a lot of photographers nowadays think that it should be crisp, clear, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, I'm not arguing against them because I think there's some really great 
technical photographers out there. There's, but there's too much technical nowadays and not enough creativity. So what I do is I use, and believe, believe it or not, I use, um, I've got one called Color Effects Pro, which is a Google, which is free off the Google website, but I, I go for Analog Effects Pro. Now there's two, there's Analog Effects Pro and Analog Effects Pro 2. So I'm going to go for the number two one because it's got a lot of things, it's got a few more features on it. <clears throat> I hope I'm not boring you, any of you. <clears throat> so here we go, this is the second part. So it just goes processes the image for me, loading loading the texture now. First of all you're gonna see it come up with like loads of different uh, classic cameras. So you can pick on that one and, and just really I don't really like these uh, classic looks. Well I do like them but I don't think they're professional. Okay, so they're more for like gimmicky and you can choose like really it's a really good program. It's a it's a bit like um hmm there's a camera bag on the uh, iPhone, iPad, iOS, I maybe mean, possibly even Android as well. You can choose like black and white as well. Like there's loads of custom settings in this, which I love. That one's a very dramatic one. Um, so there's loads of like presets already in this program, um, which I mean that's fascinating. I love that. It's it's like a really vintage. It's like kind of like even it even makes it look steampunk like there's a future in Victorian age, um, but that's not professional as obviously. And then you've got really some really interesting ones like toy toy camera, so like the old um, ones that you used to buy years ago. From you know I, I quite like that. That's interesting, you know. And I could even use that preset and then go and change everything individually. But what I tend to do is just use the basic. There's, there's usually three things I use. I use go to camera kit here. So this just gives me, like, I could do everything I want now. I, I get rid of all these different things. I don't want lens distortion either. Get rid of them. So I've, I start off with basic adjustments. And what I do is I just play and I'm playing with the image so I can as you can see I start off with the kind of very there's no detail and then I pull it along and just get just and I kind of what I do is I, I do a thing known as my own little trick here where I go left right left right and a lot of people say why are you giving this stuff away Rich why because I at the end of the day I believe it's all in the eye anyway so even if people can understand this method and understand my techniques it's still not going to have that, you know, the eye to capture the original image in the first place. Photography the, is the eye, really. It's, you're having an eye for it. So I'm not intimidated as, as by revealing my sort of secrets, digital secrets. So there we are. I like some of the detail in that. It looks very dy high dynamic, so you've got nice shadow detail here. Got nice textures. I can see the smoke coming along. I think that was coming from the actual um, stage, so I was quite near the stage at this point. Brightness, so I can pull the brightness down. Or I should get a dramatic image, a kind of grungy image. Pull the darkness down. And there's some vignette in here as well, which I like. I quite like the vignette. Um, vignette sometimes is a nice effect. Contrast. So it's nice to pull the contrast back a bit. Now, everything you do affects something else. So because I'm pulling the, contra the contrast down a bit, now I can actually sort of pull other things up. So it's all about kind of reconfiguring everything to look more interesting. So there we go. And then saturation, pull it up. I mean, obviously, if you pull it right up, it's going to kind of look a little bit gearish or some bit crazy. It's psychedelic, so what you do is you just find that right. I always think that if you oversaturate things too much, it can make them look tacky, silly. You could even pull it down to black and white. Obviously, that's not doesn't give the same effect. So what I'm looking for is that kind of magical color level. 
And if you look at the kind of rainbow, it shows you the like layers of like in the rainbow you've got the green which is a more neutral colour, blue which is a bit stronger, then you've got purple which is a very strong, and obviously red is the most intense. So here we are. I'm not gonna make it deadly intense, but there we go. So there we are, I'm happy with that. It's touched a nice level here, I've got nice colours, I'm not killing the image too much with colour, but it is a very powerfully colourful I think it could have done a control point on it, so you could have just had colour in an area, but we don't need to do that with this photograph. Because everything's okay at the moment. What I'm going to do next is go to levels, levels and curves. Now I'm not a big, um, let's let's say I'm not, what I do with this, this little line here, in the levels and curves, is um, I just see what happens, really. Uh, I'm not a big sort of, a, a kind of geek when it comes to this kind of knowing about the uh, the, the graphs and the, the history gram and all this kind of thing it's not even showing me to be honest the, and luminosity and all these different like channels of colour I don't really mess with them much to be honest keep it simple as well, keep your processes as simple as possible now if I pull this in I know it's going to make it dark, the darks more dark more intense so I might just pull them in just a slight tad. I've noticed that on the uh, on some of the programs they've got this, and it it represent it kind of. You see, the good thing about this is it does kind of represent analog cameras from the old years ago when you'd have to go to a dark room. So black was usually in analog photography. Black was really very nice black, like almost like a saturated black, newspaper black, kind of real pure black. And then obviously we can bend and tilt the photograph a bit, so we can pull the flames out here. I'm, I'm guessing this area is pulling out the, the lighter colours, and then we can bend this in and really create some striking, beautiful whites coming up there. And, and again, it's really affecting the colour. One thing it is doing though is it's pulling out noise, and I'll deal with that in a minute. Got this bit here, this slider here, we can pull it down a lot and make it look terrible. It can, it can really kill your images if you're not careful. So, here we are, just make a nice beautiful white intensity there. And it's like a painting now. And then you've got nice colours. I mean, if you painted this, you'd, you'd have a lovely rich, some lovely rich oranges there, some nice vibrant uh, reds. You've got a nice beautiful blues there. Um, I'll use my pointer. The whites are nice and strong. And it just really does strike out. So there we are, just a few touches to it. Now again, I'm gonna because there's a lot of light down here, I just want to create this this vignetting system here that we've got. I just want to make it so that um it vignettes as well. So I'm just gonna add a lens vignette. Now a lens vignette is the best. A lot of people I've seen using just vignette like in Lightroom and stuff and, and that can be really horrible so just using an actual lens vignette is better because it's more subtle and what I mean by that is at the moment it isn't subtle because you obviously I haven't controlled it Some, and that's a kind of vignette that's really kind of I don't like it kind of looks as if it's for a scope so it obviously you can see if I make it bigger as well if you did that you know for, some people might think that was kind of like an action film or something I don't want to make it look like a kind of Arnold Schwarzenegger sort of platoon thing or whatever you know so I'm just gonna pull it to around about there and then subtle it so you just create a nice gradual gradient now again you can move this as well so I want to be honest that because we've got vignetting at the top I just want to pull it up to the floor more really and then the size pull the size in and the amount obviously just pull it up a bit there so that's nice so we've got vignetting in the floor now, which gives it a nice balance. Kind of creates this dramatic uh, thing. If I just click on that, it takes it off. Obviously, I could have used other effects. I could have used dirt and scratches, but who wants dirt and scratches on photographs? I mean, we can add different ones, different scratches to make it look old-fashioned and that. Uh, but again, that's really not sort of professional. And, t and obviously, you can change the strength for that, so you can just... You can look, it looks like it's just had sort of liquid poured on it. That's if you want to get really creative just for the fun of it, really. I don't see the, uh, I don't really see the point in that at the moment. Um, 
dirt and scratches so we'll take that off light leaks i usually like use light leaks but that's usually to make these kind of like instagram style photography so you can add a, like a nice pet pastel color obviously if it was crazy enough you could but then again it just kills the image again um, you can add different kinds of light leak the preset ones usually they're okay but to, for me to be honest it's not necessary you can have uh, soft uh, light leaks you can have um, and that creates a nice ambient uh, photograph gives it more kind of fiery energy but it can overkill it you know again there's this like light leak thing here but you need a source really for the light leak you know, I mean obviously if I put that there it can add some sort of vintage kind of look to it but again I don't see the point in any of that so just three things you could have done lots of other things as well like let's see what a photo plate would make it look like and again I quite like the photo plate effect um, we can have streaked so yeah, I like that in a way it's nice for some sort of It'd be good if, again for like a more grungy, for you know, like rock bands and stuff like that. I mean, that's I like that, I really like that, you know. But again, it, it's too traditional. In, in it's, you know, you look, it's nice, but, but what's the? I don't really see the the point really at the moment for this. I just want that that actual nice clear, clear photograph. You know, no special effects. I mean, that's a beautiful image now. I've popped the colours out, I've popped the detail out, um, and I'm going to save it and see how close it was to the one I did before. Every time you do a photograph, if you do it in different ways, you learn more uh, from the original photograph. So it pulls it in, it saves it, it takes it in there. So there we are, we've got that one. And again, in fact, that one I prefer the one I did originally so again just playing around with it gives me two styles now which are very similar um, but then again I like that one I don't know they're both very similar because I've used the same sorts of effects and it'll always give me the same kind of look as well you know now obviously there's a lot of noise there's not noise in that one but there's noise in this one that's because I used another program called define define 2 which again is another google nick program this one's easy you don't even you don't really even have to do anything with this one it does it all for you really so what you, when it work when it comes up it will just analyze your photograph it looks everything at it it looks all the different noise different like levels and stuff what it's done is it's pre-selected this area for me here so I'm just going to pull that up to the sky because that's where I'm seeing lots of the noise so if I put it in this area here with lots of different ranges of noise and then measure the noise click on there and measure it well it's just took it away for me instantly there's still some noise there and I think if you if you took away all the noise it, 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 it would have an impact on the whole photograph which wouldn't be good so as you can see here it's got like a I don't know what I think that says a loop it shows you like the original so if I can go on any part of the photograph here and then I can look at it and see if that photograph if it is mainly this guy it's took away a lot of the kind of harsh noise and softened, softened it really kind of blurred it kind of give it slight like of a kind of Gaussian blur it's can be done in Photoshop but it's doing it without killing the photograph sometimes Photoshop can be a bit overkill sometimes so if I click save it's going to give me two it's going to give uh, it'll still keep the original noisy one but it also give me the one without the noise so look I can compare them now so if I go on that one you can see lots of noise here if I go on that one it's a lot softer which I think makes it better as well it's a nice life saving because obviously with dark especially in dark photography um, if unless you've got you really understand your ISO settings and and all that like you you know which again I'm not a massive technical it can take years to master a camera so this is right like kind of cheating for 
for kind of your novice photographers as well, you know. Now let's have another look at another photograph and I'll take it into Photoshop. So another so I want to just demonstrate this is like a, a webinar or whatever. Um of me and my a few of my techniques for altering photographs. I'm going to look at one I haven't done yet actually. I'm going to do a portrait one which hopefully will work. Um, that's a little dark so I'm guessing there's going to be quite a lot of noise in them. That's a nice one of my daughter. She'll kill me if I do hers. That's, uh, so I'm going to have to try and find a way Surely there's some more. Hmm, I'm wondering if these will work. That one will probably work. That's quite a nice little. So let's see what, let's see what we can do in Photoshop with this. So edit in Photoshop CC. I might use in the Google Nick actually. We'll have a play first in Photoshop. Not always. You're not always gonna get. Um, you're not always gonna get uh, photographs that will work. So with them, um, not always work. I mean, this might have worked better with black and white actually. In Nick Silver Effects Pro, but never mind. So it doesn't pull up Photoshop, so I have to pull it out myself. So here we go into Photoshop CC. So I'm not distracted by the stuff, I'm just going to pull it open. So what would I do? Like most ph photographers, I mean we can still do the um, actual, in fact I can do it in here. I've got the actual tools in, um, in Photoshop as well. Um, which have I got about that really, that would have made life a lot easier. So I might just go into Silver Effects, for, uh, Effects Pro 2 first. and see if it how we get on with this photograph oh I got worried then it just went all strange so, so we've got some nice areas here so yeah, let's just try and lift the brightness up yeah we're, we're lifting the brightness up and I'm not seeing much noise which is good and I can obviously I can do that afterwards that's quite an interesting look now I'm going to lift the midtones up because this colour, if you look at the photograph, it's mostly kind of midtone colours, greys and stuff. So if I pull them up without killing it, there we are, nice subtle movements there. If you go over the top, you can sometimes you can sort of really kind of kill the photograph. So I'm just lifting up the midtones just enough without actually killing the photograph. Dynamic brightness, let's have a look, I forgot what this one does. I usually just push them about to see if I'm going to get anything good. I quite like the dynamic brightness. Uh, what I think it's doing is it's pulling up the brightness without killing the the image. It's kind of like a, a very effective thing to do. Contrast. So again, sometimes I like to pull the contrast down, but then I can see a lot of noise pulling out of that one because it was again it was quite a dark image. Um, amplify white side. This one works well. This is where you start to again you're getting a bit of noise there. But it's not a problem. It's not killing it. And then obviously we're going to have to amplify the blacks. So I like amplifying black and white quite a bit. But I don't see like. Structure. Let's go down. I need to go to structure. That's one of the things I like to do. Just to enhance the structure. That gives a lot more sort of detail, to the, especially to the foreground. Unfortunately, the background can pull in as well. But we're not going to worry too much about that. Just 
putting up the mid-tone structure some shadow structures nice it's really working in fact I might just take a little bit of, just walk a little bit of back from that photograph just to get a different perspective of it on the screen fine structure fine just increases the noise so if I pull that fine structure down it might take some noise away which it has which I'm pleased with I like the composition I like the lights in the background here the bokeh again let's just see if we can um, <clears throat> increase I think I might need to just decrease the shadow slightly just to add there we are I'm, I'm quite happy with that actually it's turned out right and it did tell you needed subtle adjustments let's just see if I can pull out the structure a bit more it was a little bit blurry on my son's face here but it's not killing the image as such you can still uh, it seems to have pulled Abby his girlfriend a lot more in with her face but again I think it's a nice photograph could have probably been centralized a bit better but the lights you see I wanted to capture them in the center it's like an interesting focal point so there we go so if I go down to another setting here which I use it use color filter I could do I could pull out the individual colors like the greens and things but I don't really want to be getting too much into that I'm happy with the way the photograph is I go into this thing here and I, I, I think my ISO was set to around about 400 I forgot to uh, set it properly now I love the old vintage effects um, of the old camera so if I go to like I tend to use Ilford XP2 Super but with this one it's not working as God so we'll just look for a setting that will help the photograph look more that's interesting I'm just gonna pause this a minute so okay then um, I've just had to have a pause there um, so yeah as we can see so far we've um, we've got some interesting film types so we've got the Agfa APX Pro 100 I take it these are all kinds of different film and what the film would have like been like and I like that I like adding this just this little um, this little option here with different types of black and white film it mimics the old film so I'm, I'm taking it this was a different ISO so I don't know why I think it was probably around about I like that one the Ilford Delta 100 Pro it sounds, makes it sound really interesting I quite like that Ilford Pro now again I've, as you can see it's changed the curve in a similar fashion to how I do it anyway kind of pull down this area here so I could always do that myself as well individually just to get a bit more control there and pull some of the whites up a bit more afterwards myself and I like what I like about that is with my photography I'm not really keen on greys much I like to have it kind of more do tone like black and white as opposed to black grey and white Obviously you're going to get grey mid-tones, but it's kind of took out a lot of the grey. And I like that. It makes the photograph look more professional to me. I could tone this. But obviously it, we live in, in, a, in a time when these different colours here will really just... And that's quite interesting for more... I'd say stuff for like skateboarders or just to add that kind of uh, I don't know really I had to explain it in words we've got selenium which again is pulling into some kind of blue colours another blue toner here kind of type which is an old style which I quite like but not in this situation you've got the coffee I like coffee in photography I think it adds that kind of Paris look to it like the old like f photographs from the kind of 80s romantic photographs so coffee's nice can be 
um, we've got copper tone, and you can do this as well yourself, like different tones, it's an interesting colour, sepia is a beautiful colour, um, oh, another a thing I went through about five years ago was going for sepia, probably in mid to strong sepia, i to go for that one there, and then what I do is I go to image borders, and there's one somewhere around here, I think it's in that one there. I used to love that one because it used to look like a real old vintage sort of plate for the old vintage stuff. But it's not really it. It's more for these fancy dress things now, really. So I just keep it neutral and put and the uh, take the borders off. Don't use borders. And the reason why is if you're presenting your photograph in say Facebook or anything like that, it's kind of got black and then you've got like a white border and then you've got the, the photograph again and I just don't like the way it's presented and, and sometimes when you're doing your, your graphic design work afterwards you're putting in a block sometimes you can have problems with the, the borders and things so I don't bother with borders the, the paper itself becomes a border anyway um, so there we are, so I'm just going to cancel it though I might, no, I really want to save that one I'm going to click OK and save it because it's actually turned out really well. So a few adjustments from that there to that there. Again, you, you'll see now. Hopefully, you can see um, with what I'm doing. So all photographs. Yeah, we're back in Lightroom. That's you see, it's going to look normal in that. It's gone to Photoshop. You see, so Photoshop saying oh, it's green now. So if I go to view, what is it window, history, and I just go open, it will take me back to the colour version again. So this time I can show you, in fact I'm going to take a snapshot of that, I'm just going to take a snapshot of it, create a new snapshot. That allows me to take it back to the black and white if the colour doesn't work. Right, so I'm just going to go back to open. I'm going to have a look at the colour playing with this photograph with colours. Now, what I'm going to use is I'm going to filter it with camera raw filter. So it's a raw photograph, you see. It's, it's been taken in a raw in, in a raw way. And you start off, this looks quite complicated for people just beginning. And it isn't as complicated as you think. Obviously, you start off with the basic functions. You've got white balance and a shot. I could put it on auto. I could put it on custom. But I don't really want it. I'll just buy a shot. Temperature. Now, this color could be cooler, which I quite like. Or warmer. I'll leave it in the, in the middle at the moment. Let's put exposure up. So, here we are. Could it on raw, a raw photograph? We get to pull up um, some lovely stuff there with that. Much noise actually. In fact, there's less noise in this using this camera raw than there was using that Nick Silver FX Pro. Um, so we'll look at contrast. I'm going to pull the contrast down a little bit so we get some more. Interesting textures, bokeh textures, bokeh lights, that kind of thing there going on, which is nice. Highlights, now if I pull the highlights, so all we're going to affect really is the lights, the bokeh lights. Some bokeh stars even, I quite like the stars that we're getting. Highlights, the shadows, so the shadows can be pulled up a bit more. So we're getting a really nice, again it's pulled out a lot more of the texture here, but it's still bokeh in, you know, it's still soft. We're getting some nice information coming in through the face. Faces, sorry. Whites, now, again, this is just going to affect the bokeh. And I might just pull that down a little bit so we've got some really over intense bokeh lights. Too much intensity can be too much of a focal point. Blacks, let's pull them out. Again, it's quite nice there. Now, I've noticed this is very warm, and I just want to make it a little bit cooler now. 
as I've been pulling everything out, I've noticed it's just getting a bit. Um, it's got to pull it down a little bit. There we are. That's nice now. That's that's more organic, as far as from what I can see. It's a lot more subtle. So here we are. We had a really dark photograph because I shot it in raw. That means that I was able to get the information out of it <clears throat> and play with the information with it. And that's where the artistry comes in. Clarity. Now this this could really kill the photograph if you're not careful. This will just make the details more. It, obviously, as you can see, the more you're pulling it out, the more you detail you get in the background, blah, blah. I'm going to pull it up a bit, because I like what it's doing to the faces. So I've pulled it up about plus 18%. I, I, I'm sure if it goes up to 100, yeah. That's nice. You know, that could be regarded as an interesting, grungy photograph. I think that would look good in certain circumstances. But in this one, it, it makes it look more canon to me. The light, we've got too much brightness in here. We've got too much white We've got too much of a kind of heavy effect of information here, so I just like to take it down to about there. That's nice. Just a little tweak it a little bit, get a few more hairline things there. That's nice. I like that. Again, it's nice. Vibrance. I want it just a little bit more vibrance. I tend to love vibrance. I love saturation and vibrance. So vibrance, because it's more green. I'm sure vibrance affects more greens and blues. I could be wrong. So I quite like the organicness of that. Obviously, if I pull that down, you see the greens do kind of vanish. Well, that does make it look a bit more natural, though. But I don't want it to be natural. I want it to be artistic. I want it to symbolise green and earth and have a kind of pagany kind of style to it, if you like. You know, a kind of green man style, you know, earth, organic. Again, here, the saturation is going to take the pinks and reds up. I might pull that in. I'm not sure. I might, and then I might just pull the green and tint down a bit. This is where we have to. I like that. Oh, I like that. And then we've, we can go back to saturation. So what I've had to go is I've had to pull the green tint in more, so it's more greenly tinted, but then increase the saturation to pull in the pinks a bit more. I like that. It's warm. It's got a warm feel to it. So that's just the basic functions. All right, then we're going to the, and again, a lot of people say, oh, oh, why are you going into this? Why are you even going here? Just to increase, you know, obviously I can pull these out just to make the, I like to increase the contrast range. It's only letting me go up to 19 down to 10, which is okay. Um, and then I could, I've got a bit of an, I have to do them individually, do I? So again, Looking at the whites, we'll just get the bokeh balls again. I like the bokeh balls, I don't need to touch them really. Just create a bit of an illumination, which is nice. Lights. Yeah, not too much though. We, we don't want to kill the face. Darks. Um, there we are, just a little bit up on the dark, just to pull out the coat information. There we are, that's nice. And shadows, so we can around when the shadows a bit I might increase the shadows just to give the photograph a bit more depth that's nice so here we are we've got a lovely photograph coming here um uh, what's this one detail uh, just have a look at detail somewhat I can see it's a radio it, it radius it reminds me of Photoshop's um shadow um shadowing filter which might still be exist I don't know so obviously as I do that um Nothing much is happening that we can see. If I pull the radius down, usually that has an effect. No, I don't really detail. Not really. There's nothing really. I don't really know how to use that one, to be honest. I don't really. I, again, though, I just play around with things, see if it does. It doesn't seem to be having much of an impact. So I'm not going to bother. I don't, I don't see it being necessary. Each, uh, again, this is where you start to change the different colours and stuff yourself. This is really artistic then. So obviously, if there's anything on here that I'm not liking, that's looking a bit like, it's a little bit of red. So I might desaturate the reds slightly. If I take them all the way down, um, it 
makes it look a bit darker though. That luminance, red luminance. Again, each one can have a. There we are. I've pulled the luminance down a little bit on the red. And I might just change the orange slightly with that. As well. Oh no. I might just default that and default that again. Yeah, I'm not that bothered really. I don't want to. I've pulled a bit of the red down there. That's nice. Greens. Let's just make the greens a little bit more. Hmm. A bit brighter actually, because then it increases the darkness in the foreground. Aquas, there's no not going to be much aqua there. We can already tell. Look at the photograph. There's not going to be much aqua there. Uh, greens just increase the saturation on the green slightly. I think. Yeah. I like that. So again, we've got a nice photograph. There's a little bit of noise there. I'm sure that can be fixed. Split toning, I'm not even going to go there. Um, lens correction, I don't think it's going to be chromatic, much chromatic aberration. Let's have a look. Um, zoom out. Okay, so I don't see anything there. <laughs> I just wanted to have a look, see if it did exist. Um, no. FX, so green, I think that's silly. Uh, vignetting, uh, style, colour priority, paint overlay. Uh, let's have a look, see what happens. No, that's, that's, that's terrible. I can remember when people used to do this years ago, I mean, that's vile. And then you've got people that do this as well, this is terrible. You know, you, ooh, horrible. Obviously, you can change the midpoints and everything else and all that stuff, but there's a bit, a bit of it, it's dark anyway. I don't see the point in this vignetting thing. You know, it's nice to have a nice solid photograph. I used it in the other thing just to, because there was some vignetting anyway. But that's not, I like natural vignetting and a little bit of manipulation. Uh, shadows, camera calibration. I don't see the need for that, to be honest. So OK, so I'll click OK, I'm happy with that. So the camera roll put brought out some interesting effect there. So that's nice. So I've still got the snapshot there, so I'll create another one. Ooh. It obviously overrid the, the other one. <laughs> I think I can go, I bet you I can go to undo. And un no, no, I've, I've created a loop. So it, I don't like the black and white one anyway, I much prefer a colour. Um, an honest mistake. I prefer this one anyway, so I've killed the, the black and white version. Um, right. <clears throat> now there's a few other things I could, I could do to this. Which could be destructive, I don't know. If you go to layers, and then go to uh, a new adjustment layer. <clears throat> I could, <coughs> excuse me, I could, um, play with a few more things, or create layers as well, layer, but, no, I, don't, I like the photograph as it is really, I don't need to add these weird, I could add like a, an interesting effects here, like light leaks, and some light uh, abnormalities and things, uh, why? Why complicate an image, you know, when it's interesting enough as it is? Um, although I can't, something needs to be done. I'm just going to go to the define because I want to take away some of the. Again, I want to take some of the noise away because there is noise, um, and that's one thing I need to explore more. The ISO settings and things. It's a new lens I've got, so it's kind of. Gives me probably use a bit more flash. I don't like, like flash that much. I've never been a big fan of flash unless it's diffused. Uh, we've got that there. Let's just go with the face as well. You know, we don't want too much sort of noise on the face. There we are. That gets something in it. So if I measure the noise, see what happens. Well, that's made it a bit too soft now, isn't it? Um, I don't want that silly now. You know, we don't want to too much. We've lost 
a lot of the noise, which I think has, has created this kind of like skin softening uh, effect. Here we are. So we, we still want some noise because I think that some noise is important. And another thing I, I say to people as well, you know, when they're choosing Canons and Nikon cameras, is that um, what they do, the mistake they make, is that Canon cameras, when you look at the noise, I'll zoom in. I love Nikon noise. I like Nikon noise. It's, it's a natural noise, it's a Gaussian noise. With Canon's noise, this, this is actually beautiful in its own way, you know, it's got a nice little patterns and things in it where I, th I think that Canon, um, oh, I'd always zoom out. Oh, here we are, I think we could do it this way. Oh. Oh, I've never looked at the zoom, the zoom part of this, this one before. I might have these special. <coughs> excuse me. Let's have a look. Um, which one was it? I think it's old, isn't it? Ah, yeah. I remember now. <coughs> so this is smoothed, but I still need to get some of the contrast noise away. I don't want too much noise. It's taking away a lot of the features in the face. Colour noise, let's pull the colour noise up. Yeah, I like that. I think that's created a nice effect. So yeah, I like that. That's really well, I'm really impressed with that. Let's just have a look at the loop. Yeah. Mm, it's not done too much, but it's just enough to I think it's done more in the background, hasn't it? It's just clean it up slightly, made it like neater the noise. It's not so in your face. Right, just, just pull it up a little bit. Again, just it's neater still, and it hasn't sort of made the face look too soft. And let's get some natural detail in there. So okay, I was going to click OK. So I've, I've done the. Hopefully, as we'll see, we'll just see a bit of the noise go. Yeah, it's just softened it slightly. I like that. The colours are interesting. You've got a nice effect. You've got the bokeh still. You've got some information in there. Um, we're still in Photoshop. It's just, I'm gonna have a little, just have a little play around with a new layer. Um, I was gonna say just a new layer. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the layers, yeah that's good I'm going to collect, collect a colour off here that I want to explore so that colour there is nice so I've, I've grabbed that colour I'm going to get a brush a soft brush on the um, paint got a soft one there I'm just going to look at the size of it. Now this might not work, but we'll give it a we'll give it a go. Just come on here and see the size of it. Um, we've got an airbrush, soft, fifty percent flow. That's probably better. I'll make it quite big. So we're looking at. Okay, so as you can see, I'm, I've just created this kind of weird um, little circle here. Okay, and um, if I press Shift, I can create a line across here. Okay, so I just want to do that. I don't know if I'm, this is going to work. It was going to be a bit creative. And there. And probably something here as well. 
very nice. Right, and then I'm just gonna um, I might just smudge this actually. Smudge sample all layers no um, 50% I'm just gonna go to about 27 but make it a big brush. Bigger, 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 bigger. Okay. I'm just gonna Oh, it's good, it's good because it's such a high pixel um, it's not going to work properly because it's such a, a, a large image it's using up all my RAM I forget really sometimes about them restrictions but anyway if I do that um, <clears throat> Go back to the paintbrush again when it's finally rendered. Fortunately, it's not. It still thinks it's got to do stuff, which it is doing actually. But very slowly, because it's such a large image. Oh dear. I think it's because I'm using this cam, webcam stuff as well. Screen camming. I wonder if I can terminate it. should take a few minutes I'll just probably pause this anyway um, so it'll be done by the time I've done it I'll pause it I can't even pause that Okay, so we start, I think we're still recording. Um, so what I need to do now is go into this layer, and I'm just going to close that a minute. And if I go to diff, just choose different ones, multiply can be interesting, color burn, uh, linear burn. But I can probably see it being soft light. To be honest, right there. Soft light, uh, opacity, hard light, that's not good, vivid light, uh, linear light, pin light, hard mix, that's terrible. So let's go for not vivid, I don't think. Not hard. Soft light. So just that in itself has just created this kind of just made it in it more kind of enchanting photograph as such. I mean, if I take that layer off, it kind of takes away that. I just thought it's to add an interesting like a uh, virtual bit of light there. You know, I could have put some on the face as well. You know, but then it's going to it is there. It's just on that area there, and then the hair itself. So. I'm happy with that, so if I click file save, that's brilliant, camera roll filter, um, save it as, um, it should just be saved, format photoshop, I don't want it as a PSD, I want it as an original large document format, photoshop roll, ok so save, 
file type p 80 i am macintosh okay yeah okay so just there we are hopefully it's come back into lightroom now no for some reason i don't know why it's done that need to go to save really it usually goes straight back into the into Lightroom but anyway if I if I <coughs> this is a little workaround for that if I export no if I, I've saved it as but I'm going to save it on um, to my desktop and then go to save there's not as a PSD though again obviously there's a Photoshop uh, Raw again. Let's do the same thing again. Okay. And then just go to X here. Oh, save, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. I think it might have gone actually into Lightroom now because I was going to quit it. So. We'll soon see if it's gone into Lightroom. If not, I can just export it into import it so into Lightroom. So Yep, save. So it should have gone into Lightroom anyway. Yeah, it did. It's just got to render it. So there we are, I quite like that. It's nice. I can do some stuff in Lightroom as well, just to take away some of the noise. I've noticed there's a lot more information in that than than I even thought. Um, there's a little noise thing in here. I think it's in the um, in the, yes. So you've got sharpening noise reduction. So I could just go for luminance. There we are. Just a bit. Just a bit of. There we are. Easy, easy as that. And I love that image. It's clever. It's enjoyable, interesting, and it's just not your bag standard. Photograph. It's got a few artifacts, a few anomalies in it. A very art, a nice, some nice bokeh, some nice clarity. Um, it's pulled out all the different. Um, I mean, to see the original. So, if anyone wants me as a photographer, they're getting that. And that's where the cost comes in. You know, a lot of people think, "Oh, hold on a minute. So I'm only paying someone, someone to take a couple of photographs." Um. Uh, that's all I want, you know. Or they'll get them more of have someone standing there with an iPhone. It, they don't realise that you, you, you're coming back and you're using a proper computer with proper professional um, software. Not just, you know, you're not just using your Snapseed, you're not just using your your uh, mixtures, you're not just using these like little app apps. You're using really uh, industrial strength software here. You know stuff that you could even probably enhance stuff with like government enhanced stuff you know uh, you can see just the, the the creative kind of the creativity the creative options this gives me over photographs is unbelievable you couldn't even done it in a dark room without probably a day's worth of work just on one photograph So post production is where it is. I mean, if someone, if if I was to give my client, see the, this, my son and his girlfriend was my client, and I gave them that picture, they'd laugh. <laughs> you know, they would laugh. They'd think, you know, oh dear, you know, terrible. But then, once you realise what raw photography is, and the and the creative kind of options you get boom color popping you know that's where I excel when it comes to photography because I'm interested in images I'm interested in files I'm interested in color I'm interested in um, texture I'm interested in so many different things that can make a photograph more interesting some people would probably look at this and think it's very it isn't good enough you know, and that's that's all in their own opinion. But if I was to put that in a gallery, I think that's fast. I'm really, really happy with that photograph. 
yeah, it's tinted. Yeah, it's got nice colours in it. Yeah, it's not, it's a little, little bit unnatural. You know, you've got really interesting colour work going off in there. But for me, that is just an awesome photograph. So I'm really pleased with that. And I'm going to be putting it on my Facebook in a minute. So hopefully you've all enjoyed this uh, presentation. Uh, you can see all the kind of work that I put into each photograph. It can take me weeks. Um, probably for, say I did a wedding, it would take me um, to do 50 photographs. You're looking at about a week, uh, a week, uh, or 100 for a week. Depending on how busy I am and how much I can deal with. I mean, the work that goes into each photograph, it, it's like um, an artistic, uh, it's like painting a canvas, if you like, you know. Um, so anyway, hopefully, I'm not going to go on and on. I think it's been about an hour now. An hour and five minutes, this video. Uh, I've got to get it all set up now and rig it up ready for, um, for putting on YouTube, I think. I'll be putting it on. So hopefully you've all enjoyed looking at my process, looking at my creativity, looking at how I look at photographs. Hopefully I haven't bored anyone. Uh, and hopefully you've really enjoyed it, like I have. It's really, I love doing this kind of photography. I love photography. So, um, thanks for watching, and I'll be doing some more soon. I'll probably look at my kit, looking at all my cameras and everything else, and the lenses and things like that next, I, I think. See how I feel. Okay, thank you then, um, and I'll see you soon. Thank you for now.